Hey everyone, Cream Ray here, and today I have Rowan Fordyce Haluka on with us. Uh, Rowan, I, I want to thank you again for doing this with us. How's it going? Yeah, no problem. I'm good. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. So can you please uh, introduce yourself to the viewers? Um, yeah. So my name is Rowan. Um, I'm from Toronto. I'm currently 20. I was born in 2001. Um, I currently play in Germany for a club called the Story of Aldor. Um, I've been with this club for one year and I played three years with the second Bundesliga team as well as Sandhausen. Um, and yeah. So do you know how to speak German now? Like German? Yeah, I'm, I'm not fluent, but I'm like, I understand everything and I can pretty much say everything. Just not can perfect, you know? Can you say something cool? Like, can you say uh, the beautiful game? Um, schon zu spiel. Wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, was it hard to learn German? Yeah, it's definitely not an easy language. Um, it's probably one of the hardest languages I ever heard, but it's definitely not a good sounding language. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's difficult. I think it's pretty cool. Do you speak any other languages? Um, no, only English and German. Obviously, I learned French in school, but yeah. For sure. So, Rowan, can you take us back in time and tell us a little bit about where uh, football started started for you? Um, yeah, of course. So, um, when I was younger in Toronto, I played in a uh, house league. League when I was like, I think I started around uh, maybe the age of four or five, like really young. Um, and then from there, I just obviously dominated my league and stuff like that. And then looked at by a couple of rep clubs and stuff like that. I ended up playing for uh, Scarborough Blizzards for a number of years before I moved with the coach from Scarborough Blizzards to um, a team called TS3, which eventually turned into Toronto Skills, as it's known today. Um, and then they pretty much gave me the opportunity and stuff like that to evolve my game and focus on other things that I, I didn't really know were as important in football. And then eventually ended up giving me the opportunity to come overseas and do a number of trials with teams all over Europe. Right. And can you name some of the countries that you've been playing in Europe? Um, yeah. So I've been I've been to uh I've been to England, I've been to Spain, Netherlands, Germany, France, um Wales. Pretty sure that's it. I've been to all of those countries to train with teams, like at the top level. Uh, I've been on trial. And then in France, I was there for a couple of months playing and training with a couple of league on teams. So out of all the countries that you've been to in Europe, which which one was your favorite? Um, I mean, obviously, I'm a big Premier League fan. So I think that England was probably one of the coolest experiences. Um, but I do really like Germany. I think it's really great for football. It's very competitive here. And it's kind of cool to just see the difference in between all the countries in Europe. Like a lot of countries focus on different like aspects in football, you know what I mean? Like some are more technical, some are more tactical. It's kind of it's kind of cool that way. Right, which, you know, what was the highest level of football you played in, in, in the country? Like, you know, if you had to choose, what country had the highest level of football that you were playing at? Um, I probably have to say Germany here. Um, when I made my debut with the first team for SV Sandhausen, um, that was probably like the high point of my career where like I've ever played at the, the highest level. That was the highest level for sure. Um, players are very tactical, they're smart. Um, obviously physicality is a big, big point, especially when they're older than you. Um, but yeah, that was, that was the hardest challenge for me, 100%. And you know, where do you originate from? Um, so I'm originally born in Toronto. Um, the reason I can live in Europe uh, is due to my um, ancestors. Like I have a Hungarian background. Hungarian, yeah. So I have a Hungarian passport, which makes me part European, which is why I can live here. Are both your parents from there? Um, no, my mom's side of her family is from there. My dad's side is more Canadian, I think Scottish or something, but yeah. 
Got it. So you, so you hold a Canadian passport and a Hungary, uh, 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 Hungarian. Hungar- Hungarian passport. Do you hold both those passports? Yes. Awesome. So um, from my understanding, is, is it true that uh, Canada and Germany has an agreement between each other for player transfer? Um, I do believe um, they do. It has something to do um, within the last few years, though, because I know that five years ago or so, there was the there was the new rules in terms of age um where you have to be like older than 18 to be transferred right um due to like uh work work rules and stuff like that um so to be able to move you had to be either 18 or have a european passport um now i do think things have changed a little bit i don't exactly know all the rules because they don't all apply to me but I know that especially since like Alfonso Davies kind of blew up, um, Canada's worked a lot more with European countries to push their kids to get over as soon as possible. I okay, got it. Yeah, that'd be that's good. That's really good. Um, so, uh, why do you play soccer? <laughs> um, to be honest, I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's just kind of the first thing I started doing. Um, and then I don't know. I kind of just fell in love with the game. It's been a part of my life ever since I can remember. Do you do you remember the age you started at? Yeah, I was I was very young. Like I knew once I was able to walk and stuff like that. Like my my dad and one of my neighbors in the loft building we used to live in. Yeah. They just take a ball down the hallway and stuff like that. And then ever since then they put me in a league. I think at the age of like like I said like four or something. And then from there it was it was started and never stopped. Got it. So I mean. Okay, so let's backtrack a little bit here. So you said um, that you used to play for Toronto Skills, and then Toronto Skills was the team that uh, assisted you with uh, your opportunities in Europe, correct? Yeah, correct. So that, that means that a coach uh, from Toronto Skills, <coughs> excuse me, believed in your ability to give you the opportunity to go to Europe and explore your options there. Yeah. So, so then from there, so you traveled to all these different countries, you played at a very high level and then from there was Germany your, your last stop or did you go to Germany and then you know a, a team a club contacted you from there like how did that all come about um so I trained in uh, a number of camps that were in Toronto um held by some German uh coaches for I think three years and over those three years they watched me and a number of other players at Toronto Skills develop and they selected a couple of us, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, took us overseas um, here to Germany, um, specifically to train after this. Um, the three or four clubs, they came back to us, gave us feedback, and then I had, I think, two or three um, got back to me and said they'd like to see me again. So then over the next year, I ended up coming back and training with them for a number of weeks. And then obviously I ended up with S.O.S. Well, Sandhausen. Awesome. And then when you got that opportunity, this is your first, that was your first professional contract that you got to sign, correct? Uh, yes, I had um, a couple offers. Um, also because of my time that I spent in France was around the same time, mm. um, but I had to make the decision between France and Germany, and I thought that Germany would be a, a better fit during uh, that period of time. And that's, that's pretty interesting because, you know, as Canadians, we learned French, as you mentioned. So you did know a little bit about a little bit how to speak French, but you didn't know how to speak German. Did that, you know, did that bother you at all? Or was that, you know, you're like, forget it. Like, don't, I won't, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll learn the language and I, I want to go to Germany. Yeah, um, the the language was definitely a consideration because I wasn't finished high school yet. Um, so I left in grade, at the end of grade 10, I think. So I had the choice to either continue with French in France or start something new in Germany. Um, but around this time, it was like right after Germany won the World Cup and everything. So it was the number one soccer nation in the world. Yeah. Uh, so that was a big impact in my decision to come here instead. Got it. It was a okay. Yeah. A calculated decision so you mentioned that you're in grade 10 so in grade 10 how old were you i don't remember the age what are we like 16 yeah i would have ju- i would have already 16 so you're 16 
you know, making a decision whether you want to go to France or to Germany to to your professional career. And, you know, how were your parents about, you know, about going about all this? Um, they were, they were really supportive. My, my family's always been kind of behind me with soccer. Um, they never really knew that, like, well, I mean, they never really knew that there would be another decision, you know, like it was kind of always like this from day one. Um, so when the chance was there, um, all my family, like they backed me, they supported me. Um, they just wanted to make sure that I understood that with this, there would be a lot of complications. Um, obviously it changed my life. It would change a whole bunch of scenarios back home. Um, it would definitely affect my schooling and stuff like that. And I would need to work hard to make sure that all gets finished because this day and age is important to have a high school diploma, especially as a minimum, right? So, um, yeah, it was, especially the first year was very tough, but um, I think my family helped me a lot with the transition, which was very important. Yeah, that's that's amazing, you know, to be able to be doing that at 16. Yeah. Uh, mentally, you know, let's talk a little bit about the mental side and shout out to, you know, shout out to you and your parents for, you know, making that jump. Um, talk, let's talk a bit about like the mental side about, you know, being 16, you have to be mentally strong um, to be able to make that jump. Yeah. Right? Like to be able to, you know, obviously you knew you had the ability, you trust in your ability, but mentally, you know, were you separating for your family or did your family come with you to Germany as well? Um, so I had the decision um, whether I wanted to come alone or with my family. Um, and I wanted my family to come. So when I moved, my mom came, just my mom, uh, and we stayed here for a couple months. And then I have two younger brothers, and I talked to the club about bringing them over and seeing if they could also get a trial with the club or anything. And they ended up getting a trial and stuff like that. It didn't really work out the same way for them, um, but they ended up staying here and playing with a, a different club, smaller club um, in our area. Um, and they've been with here with me ever since, while my dad remained in Canada, just kind of holding down our, our home and everything. Right, yeah, that's huge, that's amazing. So do you guys travel back and forth between Canada and Germany, or do you guys usually just usually just stay in Germany? Um, normally we stay here. Um, I've been back in the last four years, I think two times, two or three times, um, especially with COVID now, it's, it was very difficult. I wasn't able to go back in the last two years. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm actually coming back in December for a bit to see my family and stuff like that. But yeah, I, going home is not exactly always an option when I have training all the time. Only like two breaks in the year. It's it's tight. Right. So so mentally, you had your brother come, your brothers, your two brothers coming with you, and your mom. So did, <laughs> did that take the you know the weight off your shoulders, not the weight off your shoulders, but did that mentally ease ease the situation of you you know taking that big jump to move to Germany? Was it? Yeah, for sure. Um, I I also know a couple other people who have been to Europe um, at the same age or a little older, and they came alone, and it was a lot difficult for them. Um, a lot of actually most of them ended up just going back home because um, it was it was too hard. Um, I I had the feeling of homesick, obviously, and obviously you miss your friends, your family lifestyle is just different here you have to adapt to it um and having my family here with me definitely provides a at least a more home-like feeling when i'm with them yeah yeah 100 percent. so okay this is really what i really wanted to ask you is you know you're 16 you went to germany and you're about to sign your first professional contract how did it feel i mean to be honest it was like i said the first year was very tough um it was an amazing feeling, obviously, because I was like following my dream. I was very nervous, um, of course. I was very scared too, because it's like changing everything. Like it's like playing football in Toronto where I speak the language, know all my friends and everything, and then coming to a new country, not knowing what anyone's saying, stepping on the field and just having to kind of like put myself out there was like very difficult. But um, my team was very supportive. All the players are very good. And it was just like putting that pen on that paper was a great feeling, obviously, at the end of the day. Right. 
And what about, you know, your family's reaction? Were, were you the first in the family to do it or has it <coughs> done it previously before you? Um, none of my family have actually ever done anything in sports. Um, I have a cousin who, um, he was a very good hockey player. He was probably the highest level athlete in our whole family. Um, but other than that, um, no one in my family has ever done anything like this. So it was pretty cool. My family was very, very happy to see me doing stuff like this. That's amazing. You're blazing the trail right now. Yeah. Getting up the path. Um, and you, I, I didn't get to ask you this yet, but what position do you play? Um, currently, I'm a winger. Um, when I moved here, I had the ability to more like play as a as a 10, attacking midfielder, um, striker, or winger on both sides since I can play with both feet. Um, but as I've played here, right, um, I've learned more about the tactics and the transition in terms of where my strengths lie. Um, and obviously one of my strengths is dribbling and speed, and it puts me in a better position to play on the wing here. So I would say that probably my best positions are right wing or left wing. Absolutely. And are you right footed or left footed? Um, I think I'm right footed. Um, some people will say my left foot has more accuracy maybe, but I, I think my right foot's probably better. Nice. And, um, you know, when you made that transition between Canada and Germany, wait, actually, how, how, how often do you guys train? Do you guys train five times a day? Or, I mean, five times a week or how often um, do you train? We train every day. Um, there's obviously some days that we have off if like, depending on the schedule, cause with COVID, um obviously the last two years the schedule has been all over the place um so they're trying to get it all set up um still but most of the time is every day in the week and then we'll usually have a game on saturday and then sunday off or game on sunday and then monday off something like that got it i'm trying to figure out if you know you probably did but um you know my first experience uh when i went to no sorry my second experience when i was in france i was training every single day and it's like your mind and it was kind of like my first or second time per se that my mind was so in flow and, and, and I was used to the habits, the movements that I was doing and just being super duper fit and always getting touches on the ball that, you know, I'm like, this is what it is to be a professional footballer. It's a step you're training every day. And it's like, now you're not even thinking about what you're doing. Did you ever get that feeling of like flow? Yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. There's a, there's kind of a point when you, I think, I feel like it's probably more when you stop going to school and stuff, mm. it, it starts to really feel like it's, it's not really like soccer anymore. Like it's more like a job right. and like coming in every day to like put in the work for the team and then um, build all of your fitness and everything so that you're ready to play on the weekend. It's more like a, yeah, like I said, like a job. So yeah, that, that feeling does occur. Yeah. Great point. I mean, I think it's more so on the Canadian and American side of the pay to play system where players don't really understand. I don't want to say don't understand, but don't really realize that it's a job until later on once they get older. But I feel it's more so, um, you know, a program where in Europe people know it's a job than, you know, than just the sport in Canada or America per se. Um, so I wanted to ask you, is there anything like extra that you do um, for training for your position? Like, do you have any uh, cool tips that you can share with us? Like, you know, you watch a certain player that, um, that looks like you or, you know, that imitates the moves that you want to imitate or, you know, that you the play style or whatever the um, case may be. Um, yeah, I think that um, a lot of people have said that a player that plays like me is uh, Shakiri. Um, I think it's more because of how we look. I think we look similar and we both play on the right side and can cut in and use our left foot. Um, but the players that I like to watch, um, personally, my favorite player is Wilfred Zaha. Um, I he like, he plays for Crystal Palace in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, I think that he's probably one of the best technical players in the world. He's a very good dribbler. Um, he knows how to take the team and put it on his back. and push for the win which I think is very important especially in a, a winger position because you're either getting the assist or you're getting a goal and the team's relying on you to pull off either one of them um 
so yeah, that's that's probably the player that I look at the most. And in terms of doing anything outside, um, I focus a lot on on speed training, agility training, because it's probably the two most important things in my position. Um, dribbling with the ball at a high speed is also very important. Having control, maintaining it while changing direction, um, being able to move in and out of players is probably one one of the most important things as a winger. So yeah, many drills and things that I can do outside of the field and on the field um, that help me get those attributes are always positive. Great tips. Um, what things changed when you <coughs> signed your first pro contract? Um, well, to be honest, I guess like the most obvious thing is like my location of living. <laughs> um, I don't know, it kind of just really changed reality and stuff like that. It made me show that all the hard work that I put in over the last, I don't know, 12 years was really worth it. Kind of just brings like a reality to like all the things you dream about. But um, it also kind of is the start in a, in a sense where you realize, okay, like this is where I am at right now. I've made it here, but like obviously I'm still nowhere close because now I'm just at the same level as all these people around me. So now I need to push and show why I'm better than all of them. So what are, what are your goals for the, you, you know, you're young, you're 20 years, 2001. What are your goals for the next three years? Um, well, obviously a big goal is um, getting a call up to the national team. Um, I feel like I've had the, definitely the season and the progress in the last two years um, to get that call up. I think that a lot of things have been challenging because of COVID. Um, I've been in contact with the national team, but things just fell through and stuff like that with all this COVID things. Um, but yeah, I'm opening this year and next year. Um, I'm obviously trying to move up in the leagues here too, trying to find bigger clubs to um, notice me and give me obviously bigger contracts. And yeah, at the end of the day, I think personally, Biggest goal for me right now is the national team. Um, that would be dream come true. Yeah. That would be huge. And are you, are you speaking about Canada, Canada's national team? Um, yeah, I do have the ability to play for Hungary. Um, I've also been in contact with them through some connections that I've made. But um, at the end of the day, Canada's where I'm from. That would be my first choice, of course, um, to represent the nation that uh, made me. But um, Obviously, if that doesn't happen, then I would never say no to a Hungarian call up either. Obviously, yeah. I mean, right, wrap it up, guys. Let's make let's put this into the uh, into into the universe. We're, yeah. we're doing an interview right now, so let's let's hope that, that you know Canadian or Hungary, whichever national team you know, they, they give you that call and you're there playing with them. That'd be amazing. Let's yeah. Put that out there, um, and. Before you signed, did you have, um, did you have an agent or? Um, actually, I I never signed a contract with an agent or any agency. Um, I've had many offers, many conversations, many meetings. Um, especially since I came here, mm. but um, a lot of agencies in this day and age, they like you never know what you're getting out of them, right? Like it's it's very tough to find an agency that fits with you that you connect with that's not just gonna you know give you the choice and then kind of leave you alone it's very important to find someone that you work well with um so currently I just work with family and friends that I know and have connections with um I do have people who help me here and there but right now as of now I've never signed with the agency no got it um, <coughs> and we're coming towards the end here this is the last question and then we dive into the 13 fun questions um yep. what are three tips that you can share with the viewers that want to go pro first um, well, one of the first things that I say is that, um, you should do what I did when I was younger, um, and make a priority list, um, because it's very important, um, to succeed in life if you focus on your priorities, right? So I always obviously had my family as my priority, school and then soccer. Those are my priorities and focusing on those three things, giving up a whole bunch of other things like. I know a lot of people like to party, go out, you know, have fun. Sometimes sacrifices need to be made. 
and it just depends on how much you love what you want to do to put in the work to give up those sacrifices. Um, I think that obviously determination and hard work is one of the most important things. I think that you need to find talent in what you love, um, but obviously talent and hard work come together to give you the blessings you want. Great points. All right, let's dive into the uh, the 13 fun questions. Who's your, and I, I mean, I should remove some questions because it kind of slows it down, but it's, it's supposed to be like a fast thing. It's supposed to be like speed questions, and right. answers, but let's, let's just go for it. So yeah. uh, who's your favorite team? Um, probably as of right now, I have to say Crystal Palace because we're my favorite player, Blaze. Uh, favorite player, you didn't mention it, but yeah. it again. Uh, Wilfred Zaha. Uh, favorite, what about your favorite pair of boots? Um, I wear all, I always wear Nike, but I probably have to go with either uh, Vapors or Superflies. Wow, and you're wearing Adidas. I mean, I mean, Adidas, right? No, you said you're wearing a whole bunch of Nike? Uh, Puma. Like, I usually wear Nike. It's a team sponsored by Puma. Though. Okay, nice. Um, what's your most memorable soccer moment? Um, this is very easy. Um, two years ago, when I, I played with S. Valsanhausen, um, we had a Pokal game, which is like a League Cup game. Um, and it was to put us in the semifinals. Uh, we played against our rival club in our area. And um, half our team was injured or sick. And we had to play with a bunch of reserve players and call up a bunch of younger kids um, to sit on the bench for us. And um, I ended up scoring two goals in that game and uh, one or two assists, I think. And we ended up winning 5-3. Um, it was like one of those moments where like I put the team on my back and carried us to victory. So yeah, that was probably that was, uh, definitely definitely my favorite game. Nice eight goals in the game too. It must have been a, a nice oh, game. Not eight, not eight, two, two. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, eight goals total. Yeah, yeah, I know you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that was a good game. Yeah, um, did you ever play soccer in the house when you were a kid? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, for sure. Did you ever like break anything or? Oh yeah, <laughs> many times. But who's, who's better, Messi or Ronaldo? I think, in my opinion, Messi is naturally more talented, but I think Ronaldo works harder for it. Everyone keeps saying the same thing. Everyone. I think it's just, I think it's just, it's obvious at this point. True. Um, Adidas or Nike? Nike. Uh, what's the first team you're picking on FIFA? You know, let's just say me and you, we're, we're going to play FIFA and we have a $1,000 $1, on the line. Who are you choosing? I mean, if it's for money, I'm probably going to pick a sick team. So probably either Man City or PSG. Okay, got it. And what, what type of FIFA player are you? Like, you know, 30 yards, bangers, cheekies, how to, crosses, you know. What's your um, play? I'm more, I'm more of like a, I'm more of like a, a skiller. So. I'll try to I'll try to sass you in the game and then <laughs> from distance. Okay, cool. Um, what's your favorite What's your favorite food place? Um, that's hard. Um, I'm not a big fan of food here, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, so if I was gonna say something from back, I'd probably say Nando's. It's a good choice. Uh, favorite song right now? Oof. Um. I don't even know. I have way too many. I mean, like a top three then. Top three, um, maybe run it up. I love TJ or, um, from my Toronto people, LB Spliffy again. <laughs> yeah. Or or Drake track because I listen to Drake all the time. Obviously. Busy. Um, two goals in a game or one goal when when assist. I mean, I'm greedy, so I'd probably say two goals. Okay, let's go. Um, would you rather score a free kick or a PK? Um, free kick. PK is too easy. What about if it's like the 90th minute, you guys need a goal to win the game? Would you want a PK or a free kick golazo? PK, because I'm not going to miss that. Free kick is questionable. Go okay. cap. And then um, if you were a coach, you know, you're in the World World Cup, or just a coach for any team, actually, 
and you could summon any player in, in history, alive or not alive, who would yeah. you choose? Well, um, to be honest, I'd probably sub in David Beckham. Um, I think that he, he was my idol for a long time. And I think that as an all-around player, he's got everything. He can finish. He can pass. He works hard for the team. Um, I think that's that's a, a player any coach would want. Yeah, well, that was the end. Uh, the last question, did you, you know, did you want to include anything else or? Not really. Just to all my players out there, go follow your dreams, you know, try your best, work hard, anything's possible. For sure. And, you know, you've done it yourself. So, I mean, that's amazing. Um, it, where, where can the viewers find you? Um, obviously, I'm available on Instagram. Um, my username is Rowan FH. Um, I have two accounts, personal one and a football one. Um, my email and my phone number are on my football account. So I'm always free to be contacted there. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Rowan, I appreciate you taking the time to do this interview. Thank you. No problem. Appreciate you having me. All right. Thanks. Nice.